Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to have to learn how to find derivatives of functions that are not y equals f of x forms. And uh, so we need to talk about the difference between an explicitly defined function and an implicitly defined function. Our ex explicitly defined functions have y equals or f of x equals. Implicit is not solved for y. You could have x's and y's just all over the place going crazy with each other. So uh, that's these are the kinds of things that we're going to deal with. And if that is the case, you are going to have to assume that every time you see a y, if you're doing a ddx, that it's a function of another variable or a function of x. Uh, you don't have to worry about that with x. We could also be taking derivatives with respect to a completely different variable like time, which is coming up soon. And in that instance, x would be a function of time and so would y. And so that means inside this x and inside this y, there's another like little parentheses function. So we're going to have to use the chain rule every time we, we know that that's, that, that that's the case. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's take a look at this equation. It's an implicit equation. And we're going to differentiate with respect to time. So that means each one of these y's and x's are inside of them. There's an implicitly defined function of t. So that means that every derivative will have to be multiplied as either a dy dt or a dx dt as part of the derivative. Let me show you what I mean. Let's take the derivative of, with respect to t, of this whole thing. So that means I'm going to ddt this. t will be our independent variable. So the derivative of y cubed with respect to t is going to be 3y squared. But then I have to multiply that times the derivative of whatever this unknown function is. Now since I don't know what y is as a function of time, I just have to call that dy dt, which is going to say, if you can ever figure out what y is as a function of time, take the derivative of that, and that's this is the chain rule part. That's the chain rule. Then we take the derivative of y squared, we're going to do the th same thing, so that's going to be 2y, that's the derivative of y squared, but times dy dt and then minus 2x times dx dt and then we're going to let that equal 0 because the derivative of any constant is 0. We knew to use the, this chain rule because somehow in the problem we knew that time was the independent variable and it wasn't x or y. Alright, so let's differentiate with respect to w. Somehow w, uh, William, work, I don't know, w is the independent variable. So every derivative is going to have a dy dw or a dx dw. So this would look very similar. It's just this time I'm taking the derivative with respect to w. Even though I don't see any w's in here, I have to assume that both y and x can be written as a function of w. So that would look like this. 3y squared times dw. Ah, I meant to say dy, but I didn't, alas. Okay, dy dw. So we would say the derivative of y with respect to w, that's how you would read this, the derivative of y with respect to w, plus 2y times dy dw, minus 2x times dx dw, and then equals zero. So it works the same way. So here you really have to know what is the independent variable when you're dealing with these. Alright, now we're going to do what's very commonly on the AP question non-calculator. Uh, find dy dx, actually algebraically solve for it. So here we're going to differentiate with respect to x. So we're going to let x be the independent variable. This is, this is a typical problem. So I'm going to d dx this equation. So this is how this will look. 3y squared times dy dx plus 2y times dy dx minus 2x. Now you do not need a times dx dx here. If you had a times dx dx, that would simply just be 1 anyway. So, and plus on top of that, x is the independent variable, so you do not have to use the chain rule for that one and then equals zero. So that's the process of differentiating with respect to x. Now what we're going to do is use algebra to rearrange and solve for dy dx. 
So the, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this equation and I'm going to get everything that has a dy dx as, as part of the term. I'm going to keep it on one side of the equal sign and anything that does not have a dy dx is getting booted to the other side. So I will start with 3y squared times dy dx plus 2y times dy dx. I'm going to add 2x to both sides and that's going to bring it to the right hand side and make it positive. At this point I'm going to factor out a dy dx. I realize I could take out a y as well but I want to get dy dx by itself with nothing else there. So I'm going to factor out a dy dx which will leave me with 3y squared plus 2y that's still equal to x and so the last thing I have to do is divide through by 3y squared plus 2y and we get our first derivative that has both x's and y's in it and in class we have been dealing with derivatives and then plugging in numbers later and we were like we would look at an ordered pair that would maybe have something like an x and a y in it and you guys would ask me well which number do we plug in well we always plugged in the x because your your derivative was always a function of x but now when we have derivatives as a function of x and y we'll have to plug in the x and the y coordinate to get what our slope is to that curve all right so let's see more practice with this let's find dy dx so I'm going to ddx this entire equation so for a it's going to be 2x again we don't need to follow this up with dx dx plus now I have a product so I'm going to have to pro use the product rule so it will be the first times the derivative of the second the derivative of y is 1 times dy dx plus the second times the derivative of the first so the derivative of x is just 1 now minus 2y times dy dx equals 0. So again I want to look and get everything that has a dy dx together. So we've got those two terms that have a dy dx together. Everything else is getting booted to the other side. So I'm going to take the negative 2x and the y to the other side. That's going to turn them both negative. Then I'm going to factor out a dy dx, which will give me x minus 2y. And then I just divide through, and I get that dy dx is equal to negative 2x minus y all over x minus 2y. And that is your answer to part A. Well, I didn't leave myself very much room for part B. Um, I guess I'm going to have to erase this stuff here. I hope that you, you know, can pause and write all that down. So la 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 la, that goes away. Alright, so let's get after this other one with the trig functions in it. I'm going to ddx this, and right off the bat I have to use the product rule. So it's going to be the first function times the derivative of the second. The derivative of sine of y is cosine y times dy dx plus the second times the derivative of the first. Sine of y times negative sine of x, and that equals zero. So it's the first times the derivative of the second, plus the second times the derivative of the first. So I'm going to get everything that has a uh, dy dx on one side. So I've got cosine x, cosine y, dy dx. These two would multiply together to make a negative sine of y sine of x so I'm going to add it to the other side it will be positive on the other side sine of x sine of y and we just divide through and so we get that dy dx is equal to sine x sine y over cosine x cosine y and of course that could be written as tangent x tangent y but we wouldn't have to do that but we would probably definitely want to know that that's a true statement that looks like terror terror I don't that let's make sure that's tan x tan y I lost some 10x uh, okay whatever tan x tan y 